So now let's let's create a a test just to log in correctly. And we'll add a method to the page object class to um, draw a login class to log in. So you can see how abstracting out methods sometimes is a great idea as well. So we first need to open our login page. And you can see, since we're, we're using the open method to directly go to the URL here, and you might be wondering like, oh, why aren't you clicking because you need to test the clicks and all that. Um, I wouldn't worry about that. Your tests should not, these tests don't worry about that or don't, don't need to do that. You should have different tests that, that would maybe click different links and verify that they open to the page. Um, so, so if you have, so you could have a test that gets all these links and opens it and by actually clicking on these to verify that it opens a correct page. But when you're actually doing your tests, you don't want to have to come to the home page, click this every time. Um, it's inefficient. It's not good testing practice. You can have a different test to do all that. So we directly are opening the login page. Um, all right, so let's open the page. Login open, And then let's just do login. And we'll do, we'll just add a login method. That's kind of weird, but, um, so we'll just do that. And we could, let's, let's add a username and password. Let's do, let's do something that actually is correct. I think this here, it says Tom Smith. So let's do Tom. And the password is super secret password. So let's do that. So we'll just log in just to verify we can do it. So let's add this method to our login class. So now anytime we need to log into our, um, our application, we can just do the login.login method. And it's all abstracted to this, this class now. So a lot of times, depending on what you're testing, you're going to have to log into the page to test things. So this is great. So now you can just call the login method everywhere in your application. And it's in the actual logic of it is abstracted into this class. All right, so what we want to do is we need to log in. So we just need to set the values of username and password and click the button. So we've already got setter or getters for all of this. So what we can do this, and I'm, I'm able to use this because we're inside the login class and this returns to the, the instance of this class. So we do this dot username dot add value username. And we'll use what's, what's supplied here. And we can do this uh, password add value password. And these username and password just reference these getters here. So we just need to add that. Then we just need to submit. Submit dot click. Since this returns a web driver object, we have access to every web driver method on there. Okay. Click. Um, and then what you want to do is anytime you have a method inside of a page class, when it's, when you're done, you want to make sure that whatever it's doing is fully done inside of that class. So if we submit and it redirects us to another page, we want to like, we want to wait for the other page to to be fully loaded. That way, when we when somebody uses it or any developer uses it, they can call the login method and they know that when they come down to down here and start doing things, that that login has completely finished. They're completely logged into the system and everything is good to go. They can start interacting with the next page. So just keep that in mind anytime you make methods, you wanna do that. And then it's also good practice a lot of times, this is up to you, but to return this. That will return the object itself, which will allow chaining. For the most part, you don't have to do it all that often, 
Um, but if for some odd reason we wanted to do login.login, .login, we could do dot foo and chain off of it. So if we actually had like a foo class or a foo method, we could do that without having to do it twice. So we could do that. Because if we didn't do that, we could do, we would have to do do that. So either way, not a big deal. This is something to keep in mind. Do that. So let's just do browser dot pause ten seconds to see if this actually works. So it should log in invalid. Then it should log in correctly. So we've got a login method, and then. Let's let's run this and see if it logs in. We could validate the login, but I'm not going to do that now. We're just learning about the page classes. We're going to need to validate the test. Let's see if it goes in that. All right. So so it logged in. You're logged into a secure. So it it called this. It did the login dot login browser dot pause and everything. So sweet. That is working. So let's um, let's convert over our forgot password as well, just to kind of see what's going on, so we can get another idea. So let's uncomment this. So let's create another class. We'll do forgot password uh, test. We've got that. So let's, first thing we need to do, we need to import our base page class here. And then class password extends page and you can see like we're extending page so with the page class you don't want to instantiate that so we just export it as it is unlike what we did with a login where we export default new you don't want to instantiate your page class because if you instantiate the page class when it exports you can't extend it all right so let's export Got password. Uh, all right, so what does every page class have? An open method. And we always do super, super.open with the path. And super.open, what that does is that calls this base page class open method with this logic. So the forgot password is. We need forgot password here. We can do that. We don't need that. So we're able to do this because we have a base URL set up and everything's abstracted out here. So everything, that's nice. So everything's abstracted to here now. So if we ever need to change anything, as you can see, we only have to change it in one place and probably like this, this base open method if we need to change it. Um, So we got that, so we got an open method, perfect. You can also return this in here as well. Let's, let's do that, let's add that to our login class as well. And do that. Um, all right, so what do we need to do first? And I'll actually, I'll, I'll put this on the GitHub and I'll change this file to like form authentication page object so you can see the before and after as well. So let's, let's start going. Let's import forgot password. All right, so we got it imported. So the first thing we need to do is we need to open this page.
We got password that open. And we know when we call this method that that page is fully loaded because whatever is done in open, whoever created this class needs to, to put that in the open that, that when they open that, a page is fully loaded. So if there's loading bars, you know, wait for those here. If you have the same exact loading bar throughout your entire site in something like that, you would want to put that here and do the wait for loading here. So you don't have to do this in every open method, but a lot of times I've found with different applications, a lot of the pages are different. You might have older pages and some newer pages, so the logic's a little bit different. So what's good about having the open method in every class as well is um, you can do the custom logic for that open inside that class. All right. So we've got that. So what do we do next? All right, so we have email here. Let's abstract this out to a getter. Boom. So let's do add value. So let's do form submit. And forgot password submit. And now let's do message. So content selector. So let's just do get message. So we got that. Let's convert this over, forgot password, that message. Boom. And so we're just grabbing the, e this is just the email form, email field here we're grabbing, and the retrieve password form, which is this. So now we just need to do that. So if we haven't messed anything up, this should work. Let's see what happens. Should do three tests total. And it worked. So now, so we've converted all these existing tests or this existing test here to the page object model. And now everything is abstracted to these page classes and everything's a lot cleaner, which is cool. So now whenever the page changes, all we should have to do is go into here. And now anytime we log in, we just call this method without having to do this logic all over the place. Um, so if you, if, you, if you find yourself in test doing a lot of the same logic all over the place, make a method in that page class to just call everything. That's, that's the basics of all the page classes. Um, hopefully I've covered everything. If you have any questions, just let me know.